Hello, and welcome to Literary Luscious with your hosts Megan and Samantha. And today is day seven on the 13 short literary spirits. And today we have an urban legend. I love urban legends. Um, and the drink to go along with the urban legend is called Child's Play. Because it's National Child's Day play. Child's Play, play Day. day. No, isn't it like National Killer Doll Day? Or maybe that's what it is. Anyways, something, something like that. Anyways, so tell us about, so while we're doing this, because we have to do this before everything like gets warm, because it says to chill everything. It says you're going to use a third of OJ or orange soda. I chose to go with OJ. Who loves orange soda? Do you like Kale orange soda? loves orange soda. Oh, I was like, if you like orange soda, I thought you hated soda, so I went opted for the OJ. Anyways. I mean, I like the Fanta every now and again, but this is fine. A third of pineapple tibbets with the juice and then whipped cream. But because I know of your tum tum issues, I got non-dairy coconut milk whipped cream. Thank you. I appreciate it. And then topped with candy corn. So, so I'm just going to get diabetes. That's so while I'm making that, because I already gave all the instructions, a third of each. Oh, easy. Um, you can go ahead and talk about this mm -hmm. urban legend that I have never, this is the I first know. time I'm hearing about this. I'm excited. I'm super excited and I sufficiently creep myself out, even though I already knew the story, creep myself out again when I was researching to tell you. Um, I have a thing with dolls. They freak me out. So cool. Um, so the story is Robert the doll, who is currently residing in a glass case in a museum down in Key West, so we could totes go visit him if we're so inclined. Let me know after I tell you the story. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna wait to hear until I tell you if I want to or not. So to set the scene, Key West in the early 1900s, okay. there is a young boy by the name of Eugene Robert Otto. He goes by Gene. We're so close. There we go. She's opening that can of pineapple. Ooh, baby. Very careful. Such a tease. Okay, let's not have a repeat of nope, the blender. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. So it's Key West in the early 19, uh, early 1900s. Young boy, Ro uh, Eugene Robert Otto, who goes by Gene. Now, he gets this one-of-a-kind doll that was made from Germany that is 40 inches tall. And there are two schools of thought on where it came from. The first is that it came from his grandfather. The second one, which fits more in the lore, is that one of the servants from his parents' household gave it to him and that she imbued it with black magic and voodoo because she was mistreated by his parents. Oh. So those are the two schools of thought onto where this doll came from. And he's child size, he's 40 inches. So think like, uh, like the life-size Barbie dolls that kids used to have when we were little. I always wanted one of those. Me too, but they were kind of creepy. So, and he wore a sailor's outfit which, oh, so kind of like the boy. Uh, yeah. So people think that may have been an outfit that Gene wore when he was younger. So Gene names the doll Robert after his own middle name. So cool. Okay. So Robert and Gene quickly become best friends because I guess Gene didn't have a lot of real life friends. And everything is fine and dandy until one night his mom wakes up to hear Gene screaming, yelling, and crying in his bedroom, and the sound of furniture being moved, flipped upside down, all this shit. And uh, she tries to get into the bedroom, and the door's locked, she can't get in. She's finally able to get in, and Robert is sitting calmly at the foot of Jean's bed. Jean's so freaked out, and all he could say is, Robert did it. Oh. This kind of reminds me of the pineapple dole whip from Disney. So then weird things started happening and anytime uh, Gene would do something wrong, he would blame Robert and say, Robert did it, Robert did it, Robert did it. The parents, here's some of the things that the parents and other visitors to the house would see. They would hear Gene talking to Robert and a mysterious deep voice responding, oh. even though he was in the room by himself. You sure it wasn't him going, ooh. Nope, they said okay. no. Um, they would, there were various accounts of visitors and the parents saying that they would see Robert the doll speak, giggle, and the expression on his face would change as if he was following along with the conversation. That's creepy. Yep. They also have accounts of people seeing Robert run up the stairs 
or staring through the windows even though they didn't leave him by a window. Huh. Okay. Creepy dog. Gene grows up, moves out to go on with his life. The dog gets stashed somewhere in the house. Gene ends up moving back to the house after his parents pass away with his new wife, Anna. Gene decides, like any healthy grown adult man, Robert was my best friend growing up. I'm gonna give him his own room upstairs. Right? Super strange. All right, let's give this a whirl before so, the whipped cream disintegrates. Cheers. It tastes like orange juice and pineapple. It's like I just taste OJ. I want to get the whipped cream. I got it, it on my moving. nose. Oh, how cute. I want the... Can I get a spoon? I, I want to try this whipped cream. Mmm. It does have a coconutty aftertaste, so if you don't like coconut, you probably won't like it, but I like coconut. And I like candy corn. Okay, so he gave him his own room, like any you know normal human being would give their childhood doll mm -hmm. his own room. Gotcha. Yes. In Florida, where we don't have a lot of room space, but okay. And his wife, Anna, understandably, not cool with this. So she's like, he gives me the creeps, this Robert the doll, and uh, put him in the attic. So okay. Jean obliges, puts him in the attic. Oh, Robert's not going to like that. Robert does not like that. Visitors to the house would report hearing stomping footsteps in the attic and the sound of someone pacing. Then some time goes by and kids who had walked up by the street said that they would see Robert in the window of the upstairs bedroom that Jean had made Robert's room, oh. staring at them and mocking them as they would walk by. So, so many kids were reporting this that Jean was finally like, okay, I need to go figure this out. Goes up to the attic, Robert's not there. Goes into the bedroom. I got goosebumps. Robert's there, sitting on a rocking chair. He picks him up, puts him in the attic, thinks it's the end of it. Keeps happening. Multiple times, he would put Robert in the attic and would find him in the be bedroom upstairs. By himself, nobody uh, else moved him. I know. Right? Super creepy. So eventually, Gene and his wife, Anne, pass away. And this lady, Myrtle Ruder, Ruder, Router, Ruder, purchases a house in the mid 1970s. She finds Robert in the attic. There's one account that she has a young daughter who at first is super excited to find this 40 inch tall doll and uh, then changes her mind and says, No, I don't like him. He's evil and he's trying to hurt me. There's another account that says this lady, Myrtle, becomes super attached to Robert and even like brought him with her when she moved out of the house. Nope, wouldn't be doing that. So eventually Myrtle donates him to a museum called, and I have written down, Fort East Martello, Mortel, Morteo Museum in Key West. She told the staff when she donated him that he's a very active doll. So, F that. Sure. They have him enclosed in a glass case. Like Annabelle like Annabelle. People will come from all over the world to see him. The staff have reported certain things that they've experienced, including they'll see his expression change, they'll hear demonic giggles, which people heard when Gene was playing with him also as a kid. And people from the staff have even reported that they'll sometimes walk in and his hand will be on the glass. So he'll be in a different position than when they left him. Nope, nope, nope. When you go see him, and I haven't, they said don't mock him. You have to, you don't mock him, you be polite. And if you want to take a picture, you have to ask for permission first. If you take those picture without permission, or if you're rude and impolite, grave misfortune will follow you. No, nope, I'm good. So there are hundreds of reports of people not listening, and then they'll take a picture, do whatever. Then they leave and something terrible happens and then they write a letter of apology to Robert. So the museum gets hundreds and thousands of letters per day from people apologizing to Robert and they have all the letters like on display. And then they say if you also try to take a picture without his permission, a lot of times your camera or phone will malfunction and it won't start working until after you leave the museum. No. There's him in his case surrounded by letters of people asking for his forgiveness. So that is the story of Robert the doll. And your drink, child's play. And with that we say, stay, stay dolly, dolly with your libations. Oh, that was super pineapple-y.
Day seven of 13 short stories. That's not right, okay. So I didn't take this picture, Robert, so please don't come for me. Uh, Cause this is creepy. It's fast. I know, I was like, where did I clip this? I forgot. Whew, I just ripped this right out of my pocketses. My pocketses. 